Okay. So yes, we are live now. So I will start this Facebook stream. Um, page you manage. Um, can I cancel? Okay, that's not working. One. Okay, let's try that again. Do I look like I'm too close to the camera? Or am I um, okay? No, I think you're okay. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I think you're it's people on TV where they're like, you can see nostrils, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm just trying to log into Facebook because it was just telling me that I wasn't in, so I couldn't do it. So we will get this webinar going in just a second. Logged in so I can access the PB page. So we're back in the office at the moment now, sort of half the time, and it's just really weird kind of getting readjusted again to everything. Yeah, we're only in like part time in the office, part time um, working from home. But yeah, it's, uh, oh, no, 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 no. oh, crap. Uh, oh, no. Uh, okay, that button. What has gone on there? Um, let's try this again. Stream live on Facebook. I'm sorry, everybody who is waiting. Facebook is just messing me around just That's a little right. bit. Um, just trying to get it going. Show on the page you manage. Yep. Okay, so it looks like we're going to be good to go in a minute. It's actually giving me access now to PB's Facebook, which is good. Um, I think before it was trying to go live on my own. <laughs> <laughs> which is always uh the way so fingers crossed this is gonna work yep this all looks like it's coming up right i just need to copy this stuff in and we will be good to go sorry about this everyone technology uh always just kind of making things a little bit more difficult okay so Just 30 seconds and we are there. So yeah, sorry guys, I was accidentally trying to stream it to my own, which is not helpful. <laughs> okay, so Chelsea, we are live on Facebook and we are live on Zoom. So um, hello everybody, thank you so much for joining today to PB's webinar. Um, so today our talk is gonna be how facialists can mentally and physically prepare to reopen. Um, so facialist Chelsea Lewis is with us today and she's got 24 years industry experience and owns her own salon in Mayfair, London. So today she'll be talking about how you can mentally and physically prepare to open your business post COVID-19 lockdown, following the news that all facial treatments in England can resume on August 1st. And she will be sharing the best tools and advice on how you can do this. And at the end, we will have a 15 minute Q&A with her where you can ask her all of your burning questions. Um, but Chelsea, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. I guess just before we kind of get going, I don't know if you sort of want to tell the audience a little bit about yourself. So I've been in the industry now for 24 years um, and been a facialist now for kind of about 14. So I just specialize now in facial where it's very much bespoke to the client. It has a bit of a holistic approach with a techie twist, which I find the combination works really, really well. Um, and I get some really good results with the client's skin as well. So um, we're going to touch on it today. I think, you know, dealing with people with the mental health side of things, making them stop, think, relax and breathe is a really important element of what I do as well. We're looking around on autopilot. So it's also very nice for the clients to come in and just stop and just have a bit of a break. So they also feel very rested when they come and see me, but they also leave with amazing skin, which is fantastic as well. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I basically work with a lot of the um, state-of-the-art machinery, haifu, um, 3D hydro, facials, the latest thing that I start invested in. I'm an ambassador for them, and that has seven different technologies. 
in the machine as well, which is absolutely amazing. It, the results are incredible. Um, so those are some of the things that I um, work with. And also I've designed my signature facial as well, a visage, where again, like I said, it's bespoke to the client, it's tailor-made to their concerns and needs, and you get a lot of link drainage massage in that as well, but also in case have a repeal or microdermabrasion. So it's a really good all-rounder of treatment when someone comes to see me. Amazing. So as you can tell, Chelsea's got a whole wealth of experience in this industry. Um, how do you feel following the government's announcement on Friday that all facial treatments will be allowed to be performed in England as of August 1st? I mean, I just feel over the moon. I mean, who would have thought the time last year we would be sitting here talking about this? I mean, it's pretty much. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> <Crazy>. <laughs> our houses for bloody four months. I mean, Matt, it's crazy, isn't it? Um, so yes, it's been for everybody. I think it's been a worrying time, and just to hear those words from the PM that we can open from the first of August is great news. And I think for me, and I'm sure everybody else, is like, we're going to get a bloody. No, we did. He was just saying, <laughs> we're long in it, we're long in it, we're long in it. Like, what about the date? The date? When can we open? And then obviously it was highlighted on facials, nothing from the neck upwards. I was like, oh my God. So yes, now we've got that date. Um, I'm just over the moon. I can't wait to get back out there again and just, you know, just get back to work. Yeah, it's felt like a long time coming, hasn't it? Because like you said, I think everyone was gearing originally for a July 4th reopening day and the government sort of dragged its heels a lot and left so many people in limbo. I yeah. mean, how hard has the coronavirus pandemic been on your business? And do you feel ready to return on August 1st? Well, it's been a big shock, actually. I mean, for me, it was just from being very busy and then just having just nothing you know having to close down the business and just stop so that was hard in itself and just think god all the hard work that's gone in and how is it going to be when we return um so that was a bit of a worry um but i just think you know 24 years in the business you know you have to just you know it's giving me strength and i just have to have determination to just go out you know and just kick ass basically like everybody else yeah. I just, <laughs> you know i focused on in this time i focused on like wellness and well-being and health and everything and i definitely do feel you know much stronger fitter just to get back in again and just you know give it my all and the main thing as well you've got to make uh, clients feel safe um mm. about coming back to you that is the main for me most important thing it's about the health and safety and it's about them being safe and giving them outstanding customer care um so that you know that's important yeah and obviously for facialists who haven't been able to reopen because of restrictions how do they go about prepping their business to reopen in england on august 1st and what are the kind of key things they need to keep in mind so I think to start off with, um, it's now about marketing, innovation, and like I said before, it's like just finding your strength and determination um, and having your goals and your plan set in place. Because, you know, we've lost four months of revenue and we want to start on that back some way somehow and it's just again like i said it's making that client feel comfortable coming through those doors there's going to be two types of clients there's going to be the ones that are going to be begging and beating down your door to have a treatment <laughs> i know a few of those can't wait <laughs> and then you're going to have the ones that really are going to be scared yeah They're really going to feel you know just overwhelmed and terrified so it's for us to really make them feel safe, make them feel comfortable. And also, you know, as a beauty industry, we pride ourselves on health and safety, don't we? And we, we have the utmost, you know, good hygiene. And that was what all this thing was all about. Because pubs opened, didn't they? But then they didn't let us open. It's like, well, hold on a minute, you know. <laughs> and um, <laughs> know. Stop eating. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Mm. So I think, you know, that's, we've really got to just hone on that and focus on that. And to have your plan um, in place, where you're going, you know, that's what's mm. important. 
And in your marketing, because I think what you said about there'll be some clients who are absolutely dying to see you again and they'll be humming no problem. And then obviously there'll be more of your regular clients who might feel nervous, who might not be socially interacting very much at the moment. How yeah. are you getting it across in your messaging that your business is a safe place to be and helping them feel more at ease at the idea of coming back? Well, it's just talking to them, really. If they have any concerns, I've just been speaking to them on the phone or emailing or texting. If they have any concerns, they know they can reach out to me and say. Um, Insta is always a good one for me. I love Insta. So, again, just promoting that. Health and safety comes first. Hygiene, um, all those things. I mean, I'm a little bit OCD anyway, so the guys <laughs> know me. <laughs> even more so so they know what they're getting right but um yeah you've got to just really just focus on and shout about it you know that it's a safe place to come it's clean you know the hygiene is a high standard and like i said their safety comes first so you know you've always got to be open and if you have a good relationship rapport with your client they should be fine to you if they have any then you can just talk to them and address at the time yeah, and I think what you said as well about being a bit OCD about cleanliness, I think people who work in the beauty industry are like that. And I think <laughs> yeah. the problem is the government didn't really understand that um, the industry works to strict hygiene and uh, safety protocols anyway. So um, yeah. the businesses that are more than prepared um, to kind of wel welcome people back. And I guess it's just about getting that awareness out there to consumers as well to know yeah. that it is completely a safe space to come back to. Because the funny thing as well, I don't know if you heard, um, someone told me the other day in Parliament, they were watching, and our industry makes more than the car industry <laughs> in the UK, and, you know, and they're all laughing about it, but that's a point, you know? We bring so much to the economy, and you know, it's just like, it's ridiculous really, isn't it? Mm. And um, just before I move on to my next questions, um, we've just had a question from Susie on Facebook and she's just asked um, for a bit of practical advice of how you're going to go about setting up your products and your towels and things like that when you start having clients back into your salon. Um, do you have any advice of what people should be doing on that side of things? Well, the first thing of all, you're going to be turning over after every single client. You have to make sure you have more turnaround time in between some, you know, your clients because every time someone leaves, you need to strip that couch, you need to replenish fresh towels, couch roll if you're using couch roll, um, wipe down everything, you know, handle surfaces, you know, before I was, you always give the customer, the client, um, they would get out of a nice glass. Now it's gonna be plastic cups that will just throw away after every single client. Um, apron, I'm going to be wearing an apron now, visor mask, all these things that we just now need to implement and we now need to allow extra time um, in order to keep up, you know, the cleanliness, the hygiene and with the, the standards now. How much time are you going to be giving yourself, Chelsea, to kind of clean the room down between each client? Well, I generally I would give 15 minutes turnaround between each client, but I think now I'm going to give myself about 20 minutes just so I'm not rushing um 20 minutes now maybe just um so i'm not rushing because i don't like to rush you start rushing around like a lunatic and then it comes through to the yeah i think that's a good advice because you're going to be thinking about a lot more things now anyway when you return exactly. to work so it's better to have yeah. the time to yeah. exactly so Allow enough time. If you work on one, then obviously with your boss, then, you know, discuss that with him or her. But they should be giving you extra time now because you have to have it, right? And it has to, everything. You want everything to flow nicely for the client. When they come in, they want, you want them to feel comfortable. You want them to just, everything should just be so, as far as I'm concerned. So you want to allow that time. So when they come in, it's just relaxing. Yeah. And also um, when clients come in, obviously they tend to bring stuff with them, like personal belongings. They might be wearing jewellery, things like that. Are you going to be telling your clients to wear no jewellery to minimise how much stuff they bring in? Well, what I've actually invented now is a, a white plastic bag that they put all their belongings in when they arrive. And, um, and that's what they're going to do. Cool. So um, I hope that's answered your question, Susie. Um, Chelsea, I'm just going to kind of um, 
answer, try and fit these in as we go along where they're relevant. And we've also had a question from Jackie Hall on Facebook. And she said, um, can we still use towels and flannels or do we need to ask clients to bring their own um, during treatment? I think we can. Yes. Again, I said one use only. I mean, it would be one use only anywhere with a flannel in a treatment, to be fair. Um, and then you'd put it in the laundry bin, wouldn't you? So I would definitely, you just use it once and then in the laundry bin and then you just turn over after every single client. Cool. And we've just had a question on Zoom as well from Bex Edison and um, they've just asked whether you're going to be wearing gloves in your treatment and they're worried this won't feel as nice as or relaxing for the client. What's your kind of opinion on that? Well, my opinion is when I'm obviously doing needling, that's a no-go, you know, you have to wear gloves, right? Because you're dealing with, you know, here's somebody's skin. But in my regular facial, no, I won't be wearing gloves. I will just be washing throughout the treatment um, because massage is just not going to feel the same. You know, you're going to have this sort of, you know, you want to have that glove. So for me, I'm going to be just washing constantly throughout the treatment. Whenever I have the masks on, I wash my hands. Whenever I've massaged the hands, I'm going to wash my hands. Um, so for me, that's how I will be working. <laughs> yeah, and also, and we've had another person on Facebook who's just asked whether you will be asking the clients to wear masks until they're lying on the couch and then um, remove it when the treatment commences. Is that kind of going to be the protocol you follow? some of the clients are turning up they will turn up with a mask on and then some won't um i mean i know some salons i went to get my hair done the other day and you know they were taking the temperature of um you know the clients that were walking in um so that's something you can implement as well i mean to be honest a lot of my clients have been coming to me for a long time and i do feel that you know i'm sending out if you're unwell or you've been around someone that is unwell then you should have the common sense to be, I'm not, I'm not coming out. Because you need yeah. to protect yourself, you need to protect others, you know? And that needs to be clear. If you're unwell, then you don't come in for the treatment, you cancel. Mm. And that's the bottom line, because at the end of the day, you know, we've just, we've just all been through this. And, you know, it's been a quite a scary situation, isn't it? So, yeah, definitely. Um, some, yeah, so I think, you know, now that the rules are in shops, you have to wear masks. So most people maybe will be wearing more masks when they walk in. You can't do a facial with a client with a mask on. If that's going to be a question, <laughs> how can you? I mean, honestly, just do a, a forehead, you know, facial? I don't think so. So, um, so yeah. Amazing foreheads yeah. everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> Imagine. Just your forehead today, Dad. So, um, yes, yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, the main important thing is that we have the mask on, we yeah. have the visor on, and, you know, they feel protected. Because if you think about when you're doing a facial, you're looking down, aren't you? You're quite mm. close. So you really need to make sure you are protected. You know, you're protecting your client, but most of all, you need to protect yourself, right? Yeah. And that's the most important thing. Yeah, because it's safety for the client, but also safety for yourself, isn't it? You've got to look yeah. after yourself and look after yeah. the client. But everyone out there has got to do what feels good for them as well. You know, some people might like really, you know, even as a therapist, you might even feel very scared to go back to work, you know, mm. and anxiety and everything. You know, it must be, it's overwhelming for us. We've been for four months, you know, and going back is going to be a bit of a shock. So, if you want to tell your client to wear a mask, then do it. There's nothing wrong yeah. in that. Yeah. The main thing, you protect yourself. Yeah. Um, and just before we kind of move on, I'm just going to try and get these in where I can. Nina okay. Perry on Facebook has asked what kind of mask you are going to be wearing in salon. Is there a particular oh. type that you would recommend? Yes, there is. I've tried a few. This one, it's the... Uh, KN95, um, which I have got. I find these ones are better because they have three layers and you can breathe, right? <laughs> the ones I tried before, you can breathe. You literally, I just thought, my God, how are you going to do a treatment? You know, I was in a taxi with the window open. I couldn't barely breathe with this mask on, right? So I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> for a minute with the window open, how am I going to do a treatment? 
But this one, they're really good. They are expensive, but it's worth it. I think you, they're about 250 to three pounds per one mask, which is quite expensive. Yeah. But if you shop around online, there is some good deals out there. Um, but honestly, those are the, the best ones I've tried because it really covers you from here right down to here. So half your face is covered, to be honest. But mm. you can breathe. You can breathe. Yeah, that's the important thing, isn't it? Because they're very restrictive. And I guess if you've got any therapists who work for you who have asthma or anything like that, it's really important that they feel comfortable when they're working. So getting the right mask is key. Yeah, you don't want to be passing out on your client, do you? <laughs> <laughs> um, like, move over, I need to lie down. <laughs> <laughs> um, Louise on Facebook has asked whether you are going to be charging extra for the cost of the PPE and the kind of extra cleaning time between clients onto your treatments when you reopen. I am not. The reason being, I'm not going to be doing that. My prices went up in April. So oh, okay. I don't think I can justify that. Um, so no, for me, I'm not. But I know talking to people, even dentists, they're adding... 20 pounds or so for PPE um, if you feel that's what you need to do then you've got to do it right because at the end of the day right now is about survival it's about bringing back the business to what it was before so if you have to do that do it yeah yeah you've got to make revenue to cover those overheads don't you because most exactly. people have been off for four months, you know yeah yeah we have to do it so yes I would Mm. And on both Facebook and Zoom, people have been asking how often you are going to be changing your mask during the day. Will it be after each client? I will do it after each client, yes. Yeah. And, you know, obviously a lot of this we've been talking about some of the practical elements of actually setting up and being ready to have clients in. But also in terms of physicality for therapists, you know, so many people haven't performed any treatments for four months. And you know, definitely with facials and massage and things like that, so much of it is hand and wrist movements, isn't it? And all those muscles. Yeah. How can facialists and therapists go about kind of strengthening the muscles in their arms and their wrists in preparation for reopening so that they don't cause themselves an injury? So, yes, because a lot of us have been, you know, I don't know if anyone's, people have been exercising throughout, but, yeah, you know, when you get back to work, you may find, I know when I've been on holiday and I come back, your, uh, uh, your hands start a little bit because you've not been using them as much. So a good few exercises that I like to do is the flex, flex and extend. Basically, you hold the arm out, hand down, and just hold it down for 30 seconds, 15 to 30 seconds. And then what you can do is then you push it back. You do that on the other side. The other one is the prayer. So hands together and forearms together. You bring it up. Hold again, 15 to 30. And you really feel it at the top of the back as well, because as therapists, we hold a lot of tension in the upper back and lower back as well, but mainly because we're always looking down. And then you bring it down, you bring it down as far as you can, like you're down to your belly button. And again, you really do feel that stretch in your hands and your wrist as well. Another good one is opening up the arms like this. Mm -hmm. I like to do. And again, I hope you're doing this with me, people. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And you can really, again, you can feel it, you know, opening up the chest, opening up the back. We hold a lot of tension there. And another one is the foam roller, that's very naughty. My osteopath's always telling me, do the foam roller. The foam rollers is fantastic. And I'm meant to do it every day, but it's not, that's not happening. But um, <laughs> <laughs> there's so much that you've got to do, right? But um, yeah, the foam roller is very good because you just line that and you just roll and it really feels like someone's giving you a massage afterwards. So again, mm -hmm. if you haven't got one of those, invest in one of those because it's something so simple and easy as a therapist, I think we should do. I mean, again, we give such good advice, don't we? But sometimes we don't practice what we preach and it's so yeah. important that we look at ourselves because we give so much energy. It's important for us to, you know, practice what we think. 
Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Melissa on Facebook agrees and she says self-care is key. I mean, with yeah. these simple exercises that you've shown, how often should facialists and therapists be looking to do these a day? Is it like once a day? Should they do it in the morning, in the evening? I would do it once a day. Um, the foam roller I tend to do in the evening because I find I have more time. Just do it like while I'm watching TV or just before bed. But as for like opening, closing, the prayer... Um, the hand flexes, I would do it in the morning, do it when you've got, you know, the 15, 20 minutes between each client or your lunch, you know, you can do it when you know your day. So do it when you have the time, but preferably I would do it in the morning for sure, because you're, you're, you know, warming up those muscles, aren't you? You're, you know, so yeah, I would do it. Mm. And yeah. as well as kind of being physically prepared, you know, facialists need to be mentally prepared to reopen their doors after kind of this weird four months of being stuck in lockdown and not living a normal life. I mean, how can facialists go about getting themselves into the right mindset to reopen? Well, in this time and in this world we're living, it's really about being mentally and physically fit. And I say that again, going back to we're always all in autopilot and it's about just stopping sometimes and just, you know, it's about mindset, I think. It's always starting the day with the correct mindset and getting it gets you into that state of being focused um, in order to do your day. Um, so I always think like meditation or breathing exercises is fantastic. And I'll go through a breathing exercise, which is really simple that a lot of my clients love. And I do it myself and you'll love it. We'll do it in a second. It's really, really good. Um, so be mindful, like I said, and also again, regular exercise. I mean, exercise for me is like body therapy. Honestly, I just love it. It really just gets you focused, gets she said if there's anything niggling or you're having a bit of a day or whatever it just really just resets you and just gets you so I like running yoga but you've got to do again what you like because if you don't do what you like it becomes a bore isn't it I find with exercise so you've got to do and find something that really you like as well but again yeah I think you've got to start the day always in the right frame of mind and also have the right energy because everything, like I said before, everything is energy. If your, your energy is not right, the client picks up on that, don't they? You know, and, uh, uh, you know, so, so going back to the breathing exercise, I all want you to do with me. And I love this one because it's just so simple. So what you do is you breathe in for 10, you hold for 10 and then you out for 10. So we're going to do that three times, do it all together. So breathe in. Breathe in for 10, hold for 10, breathe out for 10. Hope you're all doing it. And breathe in. And breathe out. Now, I don't know about you, but I just feel really relaxed when I do that. Yeah, it's amazing how much actually just um, managing your breath work can yeah. have such an impact on how you are feeling. Do you feel relaxed? Did you do it? Yeah, I did it, yeah. <laughs> <It's very nice. laughs> um, I think as well, things like this are really important because I think for a lot of um, facialists and therapists who are reopening their businesses, um, they're going to be pedaled to the metal when they reopen. Some of them are going to be doing longer hours to try and earn more revenue and to keep the business afloat. And so I guess there is a small chance that people could burn out from overworking and kind of trying to keep their businesses afloat. So I think all of these kind of small and simple tools that they can use during the day can really help as we move into the next stage of this pandemic and kind of getting back to normal. I think so, because like you said before, you know, people are going to be rushing around. They're going to be trying to make back what they lost. So again, you've really got to look 
ourself. It's that love and kindness, self-care, because like I said before, we're giving so much to the client always. Um, one of my top tips for 2020 was um, use better ways. And it's absolutely incredible. And I would recommend everyone out there try this. Um, you can, it's called Zen Life Relax, and you can get it either on YouTube or on um, iTunes, and it's free. And basically, Delta Way stimulates the anti aging hormone. So, yeah, a bonus as well, considering what we're into. But you, it puts you into a deep sleep. So, this works while you're sleeping, and it's absolutely incredible. You have the best night's sleep when you do this. You just put your headphones in, you get into it, and honestly, you wake up and you just feel so just rested. So I'll definitely try that. Like I said, meditation, uh, big into meditation, you know, do it before you get go to bed or when you wake up. YouTube has so many free meditation um, platforms. Uh, mindfulness movement is a big one that I really love. And also daily walks, you know, if you, when you get your lunch break, if there's a park near you, go for a walk or walk, even walk around the block. Get out, get the fresh air, get the body moving. When you move your body, and we're sitting all the time, or you know, if you maybe massage as well, or something, but predominantly we are sitting, and you need to get that body, you need to move. Once you move, the energy just shifts and it just changes. So it's really about just moving water, another one we all know the yeah. benefits of water, don't we? We lose a litre and a half of water every day before we do things. So up your water. Um, I know everyone knows this already, but again, it's one of those things when we're rushing around, we forget, don't we? Mm, so true. And so many people are agreeing with you. I mean, Jackie Hall on Facebook was saying that she is limiting the amount of clients that she's going to see to only four per day to sort of get yeah. her back into a routine and not wear herself out. Yeah. And um, other people saying that Alexa is great for putting some relaxing music on to try and change the mood if you're feeling quite stressed. So these are all really valuable kind of tips from everybody. Exactly. Um, you want to get yourself burnt out, you know, because you want to, you know, keep on going, you know? Yeah. And obviously we spoke a little bit earlier about um, PPE in terms of what masks you recommend, but in terms of kind of other PPE and other cleaning equipment, are there any specific brands or makes that you have found are particularly good and that you're going to be using in your business when you reopen? In terms of what cleaning material? Yeah, cleaning equipment and other PPE, so not masks, but I guess like gloves and visors and aprons and things like that. Um, to be honest, most of what I've got, I all my stuff, um, the mask from um, medical.com um, and aprons, plastic aprons, uh, gloves, I'm only from Beauty Express, um, the visor I actually got on Amazon. Um, so I've literally just been shopping around because also what we also need to be aware, everybody is jumping on this bandwagon and they are charging over the earth for this stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it's true, isn't it? So, like, the masks have shot up. This is, I mean, like, like I said, you, these are like two sixty-three pounds per mask. You can shop around and get them cheaper. Um, so, do shop around. I shopped around for all my stuff, and I recommend you do the same because, again, like you said, if you are going to be implementing the prices on top of that, but then still, you don't want to charge too much for your client. And also, you don't want to spend too much as well because obviously, you've been closed for four months. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so true. And obviously, it's, it's been a very weird time for the industry this year so far. Yeah. I mean, how do you think the next few months are going to go? Um, and, you know, do you have any advice for beauty businesses out there for how they should tackle the next couple of months and, you know, to keep themselves kind of boosted, the morale high? I think um, the next few months is about focus. I mean, the clients feel comfortable, um, like I said before, to come back in and see us because, you know, it's, it, people are going to be nervous, like I said before. So we really need to hone in, getting the clients back through the door, rebuilding what we've lost from those last four months. It is about, like I said, rebuilding. It's about hustling now. It's about really like getting out there, innovation, motivation. Um, marketing all these things giving the best service you can and being you know your best as well 
Um, so we really, it's a time where we really want to all think outside the box. Um, I think it's about survival um, and just really just, you know, thinking about where you're going with your business or if you're a therapist even, you know, the client's coming to see you, you know, you're that person they want to see. So again, you know, giving the best, giving the best customer care. And it's all about, you know, I believe if you do everything with a good heart, it always through in your work and your business. And you've just got to have drive to succeed. You know? We're a strong industry and I do think we will definitely bounce back, you know. Definitely. Yeah. So they were all my questions for Chelsea. So if you do have any questions for Chelsea, we've got sort of about 10 minutes. So post them in the comment box on Zoom or Facebook and we will try and get as many answered as we can. Um, yeah. One kind of question that's kept coming through Chelsea, and I don't know if you know more about it than I do because I'm not 100% sure on this, but um, people have been asking about how long they're allowed to work on the face. Um, during facials after August 1st and so first of all people are asking if you know if there's a limitation but also secondly are you limiting your treatments or are you still going to be performing them to the length that you were pre-lockdown? 100% still going to be my facials are an hour and 15 minutes um, as far as I'm aware like the updates from BabTac I'm sure a lot of you guys out there are BabTac members um, you know all the emails I'm getting, everything is back to normal. We're allowed to treat the face, neck upwards. They haven't told us there's a limit. Um, and quite frankly, until I hear <laughs> on the PM's lips that you can't do anything longer than all that, I'm doing what I did before, you know? So at the end of the day, you want to give the best service to your clients, and that's what we're going to do. Yeah, I haven't heard anything particularly about limitations on how long these treatments can be. Obviously, if there is anything, we will keep you guys updated, but I don't think there has been since the announcement on Friday. Um, another question we've had from Sarah on um, Zoom has asked about any cleaning products you recommend. So I guess any sterilizers or um, antibacks, like things like that. Is there anything particularly that you think is good and good value? I think, uh, you know, one of the key, one of the key ones we know in beauty industry is that uh, surgical spirit has always been a good one. Barbicide is very, very good. Um, I've been using the Dettol spray, which is fantastic because it kills viruses and wipes I've got. I've got, you know, I've got it all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, the things obviously you need to stock up on and what I've been using and I will be using. Yeah, definitely. Um, and also uh, another person has asked about, um, dis can therapists wear disposable aprons or do they need to wear a full PPE dress? I think the disposable aprons are fine, aren't they? Most oh, definitely. I am going to be wearing a disposable apron that I will just discard after every client. So I think that's, that's better and you feel a bit more as well don't forget you know all of this stuff makes you feel so hot as well when you try it on it's just so definitely I think an apron absolutely fine yeah yeah and um we've had a couple of questions of people asking whether you are going to be limiting the amount of people you see are you going to be working your normal hours again or are you going to be extending your hours so that you can try and see more clients because obviously like you said, there is going to be a demand there from some people who are absolutely dying to see their facialist. Yeah. I am going to play it by ear, I think. I'm going to see how the way of the business goes and take it from there. Um, obviously, you know, I'm going to have less clients coming in in a day because of turnaround time, cleaning time is going to be added in. Um, so, so I'm going to basically see what demand is and take it from there to be honest with you yeah definitely yeah. and um just a question about i'm not sure how much um social interaction kind of space you have in your business chelsea but obviously when clients turn up are you making them wait outside until they can come in or are you having them in a waiting area on their own like kind of what's the process as people come into your business obviously well, just the, the beauty of mine they um when they arrive, they'll be invited straight in to the treatment. 
there won't be any hanging around. Um, so I'll have enough time to see somebody out. Yeah, goodbye, thank you. And then the next one will come in. So there really won't be any crossover there. Um, you know, unless they're super early, then they will be waiting in the waiting area, but there shouldn't really be much of a crossover there. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you everybody for watching and for your questions. They've been really brilliant. And thank you to the amazing Chelsea for giving us all of that brilliant advice and knowledge. And I think as well, just for, I think being a really calming influence and making everything seem like it's going to go really well when people reopen, you know, you seem very calm and relaxed and, um excited about it as well which is oh, i can't great. wait so i really can't wait and i just wish everybody success and happiness and maybe we'll prosper again <laughs> <laughs> but no thank you so much chelsea and for the people who came in a little bit later to this this video is going to be available on professional beauty's facebook page indefinitely so you can watch it from the start then um, and we will also be putting it on our YouTube channel as of tomorrow. So you can always go back and watch Chelsea's amazing advice again. But otherwise, um, thank you so much, Chelsea. Have a lovely day. We really appreciate you giving us our time and best of luck when you reopen. And thank you to everybody else. Thank you so much. Yeah, and we will see you tomorrow for another webinar, guys. So thank you so much. Thank you, Chelsea. See you thank later. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.